class. All right, welcome you guys. Welcome to Joyful Moments for today. Um, last week, I thought that it was going to be the last Tuesday of May, but actually stayed the last Tuesday of May. And, you know, they have their own little insulated group, so we can pretend like it's June now if we want to. Um, <laughs> although, as I was saying before we turned on the recording, we did um, our theme of just being playful during the last month of May. And, um, here we go. Yeah, I never got it. Let's see. It took me about four months to ever be. All right. So I think we've got everybody muted there. So yeah, it's wonderful um, to notice what happened for everyone during the month of May as we were mindfully just being playful with all of our work, right? And I believe that there's a um, something to be learned there. If we can maintain that state of lightness and playfulness, um, then our work actually gets done in a shorter amount of time and potentially it gets done better. So I'm all about, you know, playing the game and getting those trade-offs. If I can get more done in less time and with less effort, I'm raising my hand for it. Um, so there's that. Um, and I'd like to invite you all to play around with that because sometimes we have this thought, there's like maybe a um, an idea that if we're not working hard all the time, if we're not all the time busy, that somehow we're not doing enough in the world. We're not doing enough, right? And a lot of times, um, I know that in studio here, my students tend to be overachiever types um, and perfectionist types. And so that might be something for a lot of you that we can consider, oh, could I do a great job and still have time left over for myself and for play um, and just to be enjoying being here on, on the planet. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. We are starting with our pointers today, our focal pointers. Welcome, Chrissy's here today and Estelle. Hello, you guys, good to see you and Nan and Nancy. All right, um, so let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to invite you to do something really crazy today. Who's up for really crazy, anyone? Yeah. Okay, so it's officially summer. Let's just go totally crazy. If you are in a space where, and you are safe to completely lay down flat on your back on the ground or on a table or on your Pilates machine might, might be next to you, then let's do that. I want you to see what it feels like to do your eye drills when you don't even have to think about sitting up tall. What if the muscles that help you sit up tall completely were not necessary and we worked our eye drills? This would be called um, taking off the load and just letting our eyes do the work. So I'm going to remain seated. I'm going to wiggle one of my wires here so I can see you back on the TV. And <clears throat> go ahead and follow along with the verbal instructions on what we're doing with our focal pointer. All right. So. Um, I'm not able to see you right now up on the TV, so um, be safe out there if you're getting on the ground, okay? Here we go. Otherwise, sit in your chair, and if you have a chair where you can lean against the back, that would be the other way. So rather than sitting up tall and not having any support for your spine, what if you were actually leaning and being supported with your spine? Okay, let's go ahead. Stretch your hand out in front of you. We're starting with our convergence drills or bringing the eyes together. So we draw the bead in toward us. We're gonna let the stick touch our nose. Let the bead be at the level of your eyebrows. Try to see that bead with both eyes at the same time. In other words, you're going cross-eyed. And then slowly take that bead away. And as it goes away, this is called divergence which is gently letting go of the eyes and letting them continue out there. Good, I think somebody's needing to come in. Let me let them in. Very good. All right, so the universe is saying that today I get to play with technical challenges. All right, ready? Let's do it again. Draw that bead in. So when you're telling your friends about your exercises and your joyful joints class, squeeze and hold, squeeze and hold, squeeze and hold. Slowly take it away. You can either use the fancy name, I do convergence drills for my eyes, or you can say to them, we do these cool things that are called pencil push-ups, way easier than the real kind of push-ups. Let's go again, draw it in, hold, 
Do you have an image both from your right eye and from your left eye? At the same time, are both eyes seeing that bead? Slowly take it away. Good, we're gonna do a couple more. And on the next two, I want you to be aware of how much effort this is taking. Be aware, are your eyes feeling some strain or some muscular effort? Does one eye disappear and you're really only seeing one image? There you go, slowly take it away. Do any of you have an aversion to having that bead so close to you? Are you feeling like you wanna move away from it? That's another thing to notice. One more time, draw it in, hold it there, squeeze it there, and then slowly take it back out. Awesome. And go ahead and release. So you've made mental notes of how hard or easy that was, and we're gonna move on and do some more eye drills. Again, stay laying down if you're lying down um, or stay leaning against the back of your chair. We're gonna do our eye circles now. So stretch your eyes way up to the top, and then as big a circle as you can make around to the right, all the way around that circle. One, two, really challenge those eyes to smoothly follow a circular pattern. Four, five, big stretch. Six, I hope you're smiling. Seven, eight, nine, 10, two more times, 11, and 12. Ooh, and then we're gonna go the other direction. And as we're going around, just again, make a mental note, what part of the room or what part of the circle are you having trouble getting your eyes to move through smoothly? Because sometimes we might you know, do half of a circle and then your eyes just jump back up to the top. They skip an entire half of the circle. Those are things to notice so that you can see when your circles become smoother. As they do, that simply means that your nervous system is feeling a whole lot better and your body will follow soon. Here we go, stretch up with the eyes and let's go around to the left. One giant circle, smooth. Two, three, four, big stretch. Five, I get a little ouchy up there to the top left. That's what I'm noticing. Six, seven. So later we're gonna find out if that's still there. Eight, nine, 10. And I know my jaw and my head are both trying to help today. 11, 12, cool. So if we went back and, and watched me on the video, again, I have to keep coming up here because my, my TV is off today, you guys. <laughs> so I can't see a thing. Uh, it's a little bit tricky. And, um, oh, there you are. Maybe you'll stay on this thing. So yes, as we go around and we feel those different difficulties, those different tightnesses, um, that's just a signal that that area is a little bit miscommunicating or not cooperating properly. Our wires are getting crossed. So um, let's move on. So go back to grab your stick again. And after doing those circles, let's do our convergence drills again. So draw this back into the middle, hold and take it away. Why are we doing this again? Because we're comparing. We're comparing what it felt or looked like before to what it feels and looks like now after practicing our circles, okay? So right now you should know, was that easier? So if it was easier, you're gonna give us a thumbs up. And if it was worse, you're gonna give us the thumbs down. If it was in the middle, you'll give us a neutral. And then now the TV's back on. You want to hold those hands up. Let's see what we got. Any change after circles? Good job, you guys. Awesome. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I want to see what the recording looks like because right now on my TV screen, there's all these very interesting red squiggly shaky things. <laughs> so hi, Beth, and hi, Peggy, <laughs> and hi, Nicholas. All right, good job. Let's move on and we'll do our single eye drills. Now for me, the single eye work is some of the most important. These are the exercises that give me two thumbs up, a really big shift and change. 
I know that my left eye is my dominant eye. And I also know that my left eye is the one that gets most tired and needs the most practice afterwards. So it doesn't really matter if you know which one's your dominant eye at this point, we're gonna do both eyes with the single eye gaze and then we'll come back and see which one maybe helps us to feel better the most, okay? So we're gonna cover up your right eye. Cover up your right eye and have it be a cupped hand so that your eye is open underneath there. And we're gonna hold that bead out in front of us. Excellent. And we're gonna take that bead across your nose, move the bead across your nose and have your eye follow it. So we're looking at the bead and if I went a little further, it would be hiding behind my nose so stop right before that. Again, you can continue lying down for these exercises, bring it back to the center. You'll notice it's a completely different experience from sitting up to laying down. And now let's move that bead out to the other side, away from your nose. Now be careful. This, this can get pulled way out into our peripheral vision. We're not working on that. We're working on direct vision. So can your eye turn enough? How far can your eye actually turn to keep looking at that bead directly and then come back to your center. Awesome. And then let's take that bead upward. Take that bead up and let your eye follow it up to the ceiling. Last week we were outside and a lot of you reported, wow, that felt completely different and kind of fun. Got different results being outdoors versus being indoors. Come back down to your center. And then take that bead down, down, down toward your knees and hold. As you move downward, you might notice, oh, there's the shadow of my cheekbone. That's interesting. And then come back up to the center. And then let's take that bead out to the side again, out to the side. And then while you're out there, do little bitty up and down. Move that stick just a little bit up and down. Reminder, if you don't have a stick, your thumbnail works just fine. The tip of a pen or a pencil works fine. Good job, you guys. So my eye is working a lot out here at the side. It's very challenging today. And then come back to the center. Awesome, and release, and blink, blink, blink. Good, woo! So now you have two options because we're gonna see, did working my left eye help me more or did working my right eye help me more? So right now, let's go ahead and reassess. You may either recheck your eye circles, do a couple of them if you notice that they were unsmooth or jumpy or had some pain, or you can redo your convergence if you're noticing that that's challenging today. So for me, it was circling, that's what I'm gonna try. And, I'm getting a huge thumbs up to that left eye work again today. The pain that I had or the, the pull that I had up in the upper left quadrant of my circle um, is diminished now, probably from a, a five to a one. So that's how we notice. So again, those of you that are new, we're always checking and rechecking. Where am I today? What's working today? Okay. Good news is that the exercises which work for you your brain almost always will like the same exercises. That's how you create your own homework list based on coming to class, going through the work. Ah, these are the three things that I got thumbs up on. I'm gonna do them every day um, for the next month and see what happens, okay? So cover up your left eye, let's do the other side. Put that uh, bead out in front of you. Where'd we start? We started going across the nose. So you might notice that your second eye sees the bead very differently. Maybe it's clearer, maybe it's less clear. Come back to the center. Maybe the bead is a different size. This eye registers it as smaller or larger. Go out to the side, away from your nose now. Cool. And so I'm noticing that going out to the side on the right is much, much easier than going out to the side on the left. So I have a big imbalance in my body, in my vision today, which means that is in my brain of an imbalance and in the body. So take it up, 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 stretch it super duper high. Good, feel those muscles working to turn your eye upward just a tiny bit further. Come on, keep reaching, you're doing it. And then back to your center. 
And then let's take that beat down, down, down. Ah, oh, do you see the shadow of your cheekbone? Say hello, cheekbone. How are you doing? Awesome. Is the bead look different at the bottom than it did at the top or in the middle? Bring it back up. And let's go back out to that side again, like we did on the other side. So out to the side. And when you get out there where you're really challenged to look at the bead directly, start moving it up and down, like just an inch or so. Up and down, stretching and teaching or reminding these muscles how they cooperate with one another. And we'll bring it back to your center. Beautiful. And then release. Woo! Blinkity blink blink. All right. Good job, you guys. Doing such a great job. And now we're going to do um, that recheck again. So you recheck what you did the last time. So I checked my circles. You might check your convergence or your pencil push ups. Ready, set, go. Mm, so much different. Very cool. Anybody notice? So, what was your answers there? Good. Thank you for holding those up for just a moment. The TV is cooperating for now. Yeah. So what do you do? Good job. Thank you. So um, for those of you who are laying down, go ahead and bring yourselves back up to a nice seated position. Good work. <clears throat> so when we get a thumbs down answer, there's two things I want you to remember. Number one, if you get a thumbs down, it just means that your nervous system today at that level of intensity didn't like it. It was like, whoa. It doesn't mean avoid that exercise from now until forever. It means, huh, what can we do to help ourselves not react in such a negative way? You're right, because in life, there's going to be hard things coming along. There's going to be challenges. And the more we can flow through those without getting affected negatively, the more we're going to enjoy and be able to you know, experience like a playful type of life, even with everything that's happening. So when you get a negative, for example, if you were sitting up doing the eye drills and got a down, maybe next time you try them laying down and with less effort, right? Um, because it just was a little too much input for the system is all that means. So we lighten up the exercise. Number two, if you happen to finish class with a thumbs down, don't stop there. Go back to your list, pick up one of your thumbs up exercises and do it again before you leave the session. Okay, so those are two two hints for any time you get a thumbs down. Okay, because it does happen and it should happen if we're working on forward progress as well. All right, so now that our eyes are are ready in that way, let's go ahead and work from our actually let's work from our feet. Go ahead and stand up. Let's go to the feet next. All right, so we're going to go ahead and step forward with your right foot. Step forward with your right foot. Please utilize something to support you for stability. No falling down on the joyful joints class, kids. So you've got one foot in front of the other. I want you to activate. I want you to think about bringing your thigh bones toward the center of your body. If you feel those thigh bones coming to the center of your body, then we can take our front ankle, our right ankle, tip it off to the outside and put it back to the outside and back. Good, smiling all the way, right? So again, if doing this gives you a thumbs down, you could do this exercise in a seated position or in a two hand supported position, something which takes some of the difficulty out of the exercise. Very good, one more time with that ankle. Now today I'd like you to take that foot and turn it out at 45 degrees. So turn that foot out from your center to 45 degrees. And then you're going to tip that ankle backwards and put it flat. Tip it backwards and put it flat. Tip it backwards and flat. Good job. Back and flat two more times. Back, flat one more. Back and flat. Fantastic. Let's change feet. Step forward with your left foot. But again, Make it playful, make it simple. You guys that are really well balanced and feeling super good, sometimes it's nice to come back to the basics and just go through them. Take that front foot, tip it over and put it back. 
that going back to the basics, you know what it's like? It's the ballerinas, it's the prima ballerina. She still goes in every day to the studio and starts at the bar with her simple footwork, period, the end. And if you're a golfer, if you understand golf, what do they do? First thing they do before they go out and play the masters is stop by the putting green and just hit the ball a few times. So turn that foot out. That's right, turn that foot out to 45 degrees now and we're gonna tip it back off that back edge and put it back flat, back. Good job, excellent. So we are all humans in a human body. And if we go back to the basics of what our human body needs for movement, that's all we're doing here, folks. Good job, two more times, back and forward. Good job, back and forward, yes. All right, get yourself something to stabilize. We're doing toe pulls next. So we're gonna flip our foot upside down and maybe reach it back a little further today. So if you have a hard surface, put your foot up on a pillow. There you go. But we're taking this leg actually behind the other one. So sometimes we have our legs really close together, but we're gonna try to reach back more. That's it. And as you reach back, let's try to keep our spine tall. Do you remember that work from last week? Thinking about the back side of our body remaining tall. And then you can put as much pressure here as your ankle is capable of supporting. Be careful. And then roll onto your big toe. So that knee points out to the side. And then go to your pinky toe and stretch there. Beautiful. And then back, back and forth a little bit, kind of rolling out across the front of that ankle with that leg nicely behind you. Now I'm having to bend down a little bit in order to get my foot there. So your standing leg might get tired. That's why you might use a pillow or something to support that foot. All right, shake that foot out. Let's do the other side. So I'm holding onto my imaginary countertop, flipping my other foot upside down and getting this leg behind me. Reach behind you with that spine tall. Good job. Try not to lean forward like this. That's a different game. So try to stand tall. Good. Maybe just gently sit down a little bit. All right. Taking as much pressure as your ankle is willing. And then we roll to the big toe and then to the pinky toe and then to the big toe and then to the pinky toe. One more time to the big toe and maybe back and forth a little bit. Good, and then shake that out, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our feet all the way together, your ankles together, the toes together, the ball of the foot that is. Yes, very nice. And what we're gonna do today is a little bit of prancing work. So we are trying to get our feet to have this kind of a waving motion, right? Ever put your hands out there and see if your hands can form this nice little waving action. Now your feet have all of the same bones that your hands do. So your feet should be able to be as supple as your hands. We just don't practice with them that way. And our feet kind of sometimes turn into bricks <laughs> and they move like this and they don't have much flexibility at all. So we're just gonna work on that flexibility today, that wave motion. So by rolling your heel up and you're pushing into the ball of your foot, try not to go up onto your tiptoes, just to the ball of your foot and have some downward pressure there. Good. And then we'll put that heel back down and roll up on the other one. So we have the ball of your foot with pressure on the ground. Now, those of you with bunions, I have that too. And this foot never used to bend. That toe was stuck like nothing. Put your heel back down. Switching back and forth. So I want you to just visualize, even if the toe doesn't bend so much, visualize it bending. There you go. And keeping our ankles and thighs toward the midline. And as you start to feel that, we can start to go a little faster, changing from one foot to the other. Yes. And as you're doing that, maybe you're holding on to something. Maybe you can visualize and feel more of a waving action on the way up and on the way down. How are we doing? Good. One thing you wanna to try to avoid is letting your ankle fall out to the side. Having too much pressure on your pinky toe, that's not a good one. It's on the big toe knuckle with those ankle staying center. That looks great. Now, who wants to go nice and fast? 
Who wants to just roll through those feet? There you go. You feel like you're going to take off any second now, right? Go for a run. <laughs> All right, shake your legs out. Very nice, you guys. Let's go ahead now and put our hands on our knees. Again, keep your hand on something if you've got some wobbly issues and circle those knees to the right. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Reverse it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Beautiful, you guys. And then take your feet apart. Ah. <sighs> With all that beautiful flexibility in our ankles and our feet and our knees, now let's come up, tap the outside of your leg until you find your hip joint. Your hip joint is not your waistline, right? This is where our belly button is. There is a bone there, but it's the top of your pelvis. Come down to your hip and let's move those thighs. Let your thighs circle that pelvis around and around to the right. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, good, 10, 11, 12, reverse, one. Notice that there's any glitchy spots in your hip circles. And then I wonder how that relates to the glitchy spots in our eye circles. That'd be a fun study for you to do during the week, but some of you will do it. There you go, very good. Now, let's keep our feet apart today and bend your knees a little bit. Just bend your knees a little bit. Great. Do you remember where our spine gets tall from? From last week, the back of our body is where the spine is. So when I say bend your knees, but make your spine tall, that means that our tailbone, our tail doesn't get to point up in the air, it points down to your heels. So we're gonna practice moving that part of our body your tail pointing behind you, and then your tail pointing way in front of you. Tail back, tail forward. Now try to do that motion using your hip muscles versus pinching your back and letting your belly button spill out. Can you do that? That's pretty subtle. Some of you might be li listening to me saying, what is she talking about? Don't worry about it. If it makes no sense, keep thinking about it. One of these days, your hips will take over and your back will get to relax more. Who's up for backs relax more? Yay. Yeah, right? Now, let's try side to side then. What if your tail is pointed nicely downward and you wiggle it from side to side? Good, again, this is not let me hoist this up and wiggle my whole body. It's let me keep my spine tall and only push with my legs. So I don't know about you guys, my thighs are getting kind of tired, which is a good thing. If I'm, well, maybe it's not a good thing. Maybe they shouldn't be getting tired with just wiggling our hips. Because what if I wanted to go up a flight of stairs? I might need those muscles to be stronger, huh? Yes, good job, you guys. And go ahead and rise. Jiggle your legs out and bring your feet back together. Let's come back and have a seat. I'd like for you to recheck either your eye circles or your convergence. So we just did a lot of lower body work. Um, let's see what your answers are to reassessing our eyes now. And I realized some of you are reassessing while you were lying down. So this is, is not a perfectly accurate reassessment. Show me what you got there. I'll see if my TV stays on long enough for me to see that. Good. Awesome. Ah, we got grins. There's grins out there. Super awesome. Okay, good. So did you notice that some of you had more positive results working the lower body? Some of you had more positive results working the eyes. Okay, that's why we do everything in the course of the class so that hopefully we're addressing what everybody needs on some level. And your job is to what? Make note of it. What's the part that you're gonna do between now and next week all by yourself, yeah? And if you don't know, if you don't have the ability to do that, you're gonna open the recording and just do the class again every day. That's the easiest. I think we've taken away every objection to you guys being able to work this in between. Okay, so there you go. If you still have objections, I don't think I can help you, <laughs> right? 
Oh, sorry, this is such a fun game for me. And I, I say that with all lovingly because I do the same thing. We all have those places where we would like to be better and we know what we could do, but we just kind of maybe skip that one thing, right? And, and then it's about wondering why do we do that? So let's go ahead and come back. Um, we'll start from the neck and work our way down to the center of the spine. So be aware of your throat. Good, we're gonna speed up a little bit as we move toward the end of class. That's kind of how we work this. Bring your throat back, let the back of the neck get taller and longer, all seven vertebrae having lots of space, turn your head from side to side. So if you got a thumbs up on your eye work, you might be noticing that, you know, this is the first time we've moved our neck, but boy, it feels pretty free compared to where we usually start, right? It's because you don't have to warm up everything in order for everything to feel better. That's fun. Good, and then we'll go up and down. Crown back, crown forward. Crown back, crown forward, very nice. Are those vertebrae staying nicely away from one another, nicely supported? You can imagine some nice cushioning in between all of those vertebrae. So proud of you guys. Two more times. Excellent. And then we'll try our sideways tip. Remember, ear up, ear up. Try, it's really easy to want to crunch down toward your shoulder. Put your attention on the other side, lifting up and away from your shoulder. There you go. To try to restore this side tilting movement. That's it, much better. Now, what if you tilt your head to the side and then look down at your shoulder? up at the ceiling, be gentle. Look down and look up while your head is tilted. So this is how we layer and we add things on. Be gentle, over to the other side. And then look down and up. Reminder, what level of intensity are we to be working at here? Three or less out of a scale of 10. So those of you who are out there overachieving and trying to push things to be better, might have the opposite effect of what we're looking for. Be gentle, come back to your center. Whoa, who feels like they have a little bobblehead now? Like your head could just go spinning off. <laughs> yeah, okay, come back to your chest now. So be aware of the heart, be aware of the center of the chest. Good, touch the sides of your rib cage. So the sides of our rib cage, one half is gonna come forward while the other half pulls backward. And this is the rib cage only. This one's kind of fun to do with your body sitting against a wall as well. You can really feel this band of muscles is what should be rotating us. So check and see, do your shoulders wanna take over and try to push the rib cage around? Are your arms and shoulders relaxed so that the effort is at the heart and below, okay? I know that we have a lot of pranic healers on our class today. And you understand that when we make movement in a certain part of the body, we are cleansing the corresponding energy centers. There you go. Wonderful, you guys. Now let's go open the heart, let the arms drop and rotate them outward. So we're squeezing up and in around that back heart. The neck should be free, relaxed. If it's not relaxed, drop your shoulders better. Good, come forward, bring your heart in, let those arms rotate in. And again, it's still relaxed shoulders. So we're feeling our back heart possibly opening up. <clears throat> that back side of your chest around where the heart lives is opening, expanding, breathing. Other direction, open your front heart, rotate those arms, let that heart rise, squeezing around the back. And again, to the front, squeeze the front heart, rotate those arms inward and open up that back. And front heart open, lift, breathe, open the front side while we squeeze out junk from the back and round the front, open the back side while you squeeze out junk from the front and come back to neutral. Very good. So let's go ahead and do, um, I'm gonna invite you to do large arm circles, but if you have some shoulder pain, I'd rather you just touch your fingers right here on the, the shoulder itself 
and we'll move just our elbows around. The point of this is to try to get openness and space under the arm, okay? So you can do it either from here circling or go ahead and do full arm circles today. That's your choice. Here we go. Around backwards. Good. I know I'm gonna see my friend Nicholas reaching for the ceiling all the way up there. Uh -huh. There we go, thank you. All the way up there. It's so important to get your arms up over your head, guys. Hang on things. We did that in the studio for the month of May for play day, and boy, did we breathe better. So many good things happen with hanging. Circle the other direction. So take a stop at your local playground. Grab a hold of the bar. You don't have to pick your feet up off the ground even, but just at least bend down and let yourself hang with partially some of your weight. Or if you have a beautiful tree out front, make sure it's a safe tree. <laughs> Try hanging. Good, bring your hands to your shoulders and drop those arms, drop those arms. Nice job on the circles. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Bring those hands in front of you. Be aware of the center of your hands and circle them to the right. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Reverse that one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Now let's play with our hands like we did with our feet. So stretch and bend your hands backward, curl your fingers and squeeze them, and then let them roll down and splash out. So it's kind of like a little dolphin game here. Oof, my hand is really tired. Pull them back, squeeze, curl them down, and release. Good. How's that feel? It feels like my hands don't even know how to do this right now. <laughs> it's a fascinating feeling. Woo! Yes. Oh, my goodness. Um, all right, shake that out. Let's go ahead and do a reassess. Reassess. So you either were checking your circles or your convergence. I was doing circles. Let me go back to that. Oh, wow. I got a double thumbs up now from the upper body work, right? So we reassessed after we did some lower body stuff. Now we reassessed after we've done some upper body stuff. What you get? What you get? Yeah, good, good. Ooh, yeah, some neutrals. Good. Some double thumbs up. Yeah, good. I love the variety that we're getting. That means you guys are really getting down to your personal effort. So good job. Um, I will say that we played some, you know, just gentle racket games. Um, and I was surprised I have, that was an area that I haven't done for a long time. And it was very difficult. My hands didn't know how to control a racket. So um, I encourage you get out little, little rackets and bounce things back and forth to a friend. That's a good game. Even if it's as simple as like a ping pong paddle and a balloon, right? Another good thing to play. Um, a tennis racket with a wiffle ball, all kinds of variety of things. Challenge yourself with some summer games, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and finish. I think we are all in fairly good spot. For those of you who may be out of that last segment, I didn't see everyone. If anybody had a thumbs down after that last segment, um, make note of it because you're gonna wanna come back and do something to bring you up. But together, we're gonna do breathing, which is an exercise in itself. All right, and we haven't done this one for a while. What we're gonna do is the, the blowing out the candles. All right, so let's celebrate some birthdays, but maybe we'll celebrate all of our summer birthdays. I don't know what we're doing, but imagine you had a nice cake out there. Most of us have quite a few candles on our cake at this point. <laughs> so we're gonna try to blow them all out with one breath, okay? And if you wanna have more power to your breath, point to the spot you have to squeeze to push the air out more. Do you know where it is? Right here. Contracting the navel helps us to get more air out and your whole torso is gonna go and contract in, okay? There we go. Imagine your cake, inhale to get ready. Now blow, you guys. Keep contracting and blowing. Keep going. When you think you run out of air, contract a little more, blow a little further. Stop. Now let the air back in. Oh. 
So hopefully what you find out of this exercise is that you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there's no more air. Wait, I just blew a little bit more. There was more air. There's 70% more air in your lungs, right? When you get to where you think you're done, there's plenty of air left to keep blowing. What I want you to notice is when we say, okay, let it back in, notice how easily the breath comes back into the body, okay? Let's do it again. Inhale, let that belly expand to get ready, and blow. Come on, with some force, get it out. Come on, go, more. Stop, let it in. Oh, it's kind of as satisfying as, you know, when you get something as vacuum packed and you like do that first little slit in the packaging and goes, and it expands. That's what it feels like. It's so cool and refreshing. Let's do it one more time. You ready? Inhale, let your belly expand to inhale and blow guys. Come on, you're older than 20, get more uh, candles out. Keep going. A lot of us are past 50. Keep going. Stop. Let it in. Oh. My heart's even saying a little bit of thank you. Thank you for the effort. Thank you for the massage. A little flutter going on there. All right. So after that, let's do that final reassessment. Your final reassessment of the day, please. Wow. I'm a super double thumbs up today on that eye circling for me. Yeah, double thumbs up, good. All right, you guys are amazing. Um, I am gonna go ahead and um, we'll say goodbye for today. Um, for those of you who are interested, um, this coming Saturday, is our first Saturdays. This is something we do here at the studio. Every first Saturday, we have a, a meditation and a little healing clinic. So it is, you are welcome to come virtually. You, if you're local, you can show up in person. We do ask that you register so we don't miss you and so you can get the Zoom link. But we spend about 45 minutes doing some movement and meditation. And then following that, you are, are welcome to stay with us and um, and experience a sample chronic healing from one of our practitioners. So feel free to join us for that. Check it out on the website. And ah, if you'd like to stay around for question and answer, we'll see how the technology does for us today. But other than that, hey, enjoy the play. <laughs>